Pippin Emma had been purchased by the Fat Controller to run the Railways Express service to London. The diesels were honoured and quickly proved their worth. The engines, however, were nervous. Gordon had always been the Premier Express engine, but with the arrival of the high-speed train, Gordon was finally retired from the Express. The engines worried Gordon would be resentful, but the big engine stepped down with grace and joined the others in warmly welcoming Pip and Emma to the family. Gordon, after being given a short, well-earned rest, began work pulling local trains. After so many years of hurrying about, he enjoyed the gentler pace. But although he projected an image of content, deep down he still felt a little disheartened. One evening, he found himself alone in the sheds. Alone with his thoughts, he didn't notice Edward shuffle in. Hello, Gordon, Edward called. The big engine jumped. Edward! I didn't see you come in! Edward smiled. I apologize if I startled you. You seemed rather forlorn. Is everything all right? Yes, yes, everything is fine, little Edward, said Gordon as loftily as he could. Edward gave a reassuring smile. I've known you a long time, Gordon, so I can tell if something is up. If you don't wish to share it, that's fine. Oh, you're right, Edward, admitted Gordon. There's been a small something on my mind. It's just the express, you see, he said, after a pause. It's not that I'm jealous or that I'm unhappy with Pip and Emma. I think they're doing a fine job, better than I can at this old age. But it's just... I just wish I could have one last run with it, you know? My last run was quite sudden. It would be nice to have had a proper send-off. I know what you mean, comforted Edward. I'm sorry you feel that way. Never mind, muttered Gordon. It'll pass, I'm sure. With that, he retired to sleep, leaving Edward to ponder the situation. What neither engine had noticed was the quiet arrival of Pip and Emma. Oh, botheration, flounced Pip. I've never had luck with this silly cooling system. It was the next morning. Most of the engines had set off for work, but Pip wasn't feeling well. Whatever shall we do? cried Pip as dramatically as she could. I'll never be able to work alone, cut in Emma woefully. I wasn't feeling quite right yesterday, so I don't know if I'll be able to manage. Whatever are we to do, sighed Pip. The inspectors scratched their heads. The faults with the diesels couldn't have come at a worse time. We've got to do something, one muttered. The express is due out soon. We'll never make it, moaned Emma. You'll have to get someone else. But who, replied the inspector. Oh, oh, why not Gordon, said Emma innocently. Gordon was still on shed. His first train was due out for a while yet. The inspector hurried over to him. Gordon, do you think you could step in? We might be able to restore the old system just until we've a proper stand-in ready. Gordon was surprised, but excited. I can certainly try, sir. And so the arrangements were swiftly made, and Gordon was hastily readied for the express. He was very excited and wanted to go to the station straight away. When at last he backed onto the train, he found the Fat Controller waiting for him. Thank you, Gordon, he said. You've saved us from an awkward predicament. You just need to get to the train to the end of the line, just as you always have. A high-speed train will take over from there. The passengers know they'll be delayed, so don't worry about being behind time. Don't worry, sir. I'll get them there early, chortled Gordon. Just you wait and see. The Fat Controller smiled and tipped his hat just as the guard's whistle blew. Gordon responded with gusto, whistle blasting, wheels spinning, and the engine snorting the express swiftly drew out of the station. Come along, come along, come along, called Gordon excitedly from the front. Trickety trot, trickety trot, sang the coaches from behind. With one last youthful cry of hurry, hurry, hurry! Gordon and the Express rattled around the corner and out of sight. The Fat Controller watched until the train had long disappeared from view. By a fortunate stroke of luck, not long after Gordon had left the station, Pip and Emma found themselves feeling quite healthy once again. The Diesels felt rather pleased with themselves, but they had forgotten about the Fat Controller. I am quite aware what transpired this morning, and I do not approve of my engines feigning illness, he said to them. However, 
Edward has told me why you may have played such a game. Because of this, I am willing to turn a blind eye, just this once. So long as we have a firm understanding that this sort of thing is to never be repeated. The Diesels agreed wholeheartedly. Yes, sir. We are sorry, sir. Thank you, sir. They were waiting for their next train when Gordon trundled into sight. He felt worn out, but he couldn't look happier. Hello, Gordon, smiled Emma, who was at the front. Thank you for filling in for us. Did you have a good run? Yes, indeed, beamed Gordon. It truly felt like a proper send-off. I couldn't have asked for a better run. Excellent, smiled Pip. We're glad you enjoyed yourself. Thank you, you two, Gordon added quietly with a wink. I'm not as naive as you may think. I appreciate the gesture, not to mention your service. I feel quite worn out after all that. I just don't have the energy anymore, so it's all the better you're here instead. The three engines laughed happily, glad that the torch had finally been passed with style and grace.